Almost all digital cameras have a little screen on the back. A lot happens on this screen. This is where you adjust many of the internal settings in your camera and where you review the shots you've taken. And on many cameras, you can also use this screen as a live viewfinder, which can give you much more accurate control over framing your shots than using the often inaccurate optical peephole found in most consumer cameras. Some cameras have this feature turned on by default, and some make you turn it on manually, either with a little button, like this one, or by adjusting a menu setting. Once you've taken a picture, the screen is a useful place to review and examine your snapshots. One of the most powerful aspects of digital photography is the ability to tell immediately whether you took a good picture or not. If not, you can take another one on the spot. One very important part of this process is to learn whether or not your camera can zoom into the pictures in this preview window. Most cameras can. If a good shot's important to you, zoom all the way in on it to make sure it's in proper focus. A tiny screen like this is useless for detecting subtle sharpening problems when a picture is zoomed all the way out. You might think you have a great picture only to download it later and find out it's crummy. So save yourself some heartache. Check your focus in the preview window. Get to know your camera's menu system if you want to gain the most control over your pictures. And here are some of the typical settings you can adjust in your camera's menus. A digital image is made up of a mosaic of rectangular colors called pixels. Resolution, sometimes called dimension, refers to the number of pixels in your image. The more pixels you have, the more detail your image contains, and the larger you can print your photograph and have it remain clear and sharp. But larger images take up more room, both on your camera's memory card and your computer. Of course, if you follow my earlier advice, you'll get a really big memory card, so this won't be much of a problem. But if packing in the maximum number of photos on a single memory card is your most important priority, pick a smaller setting. However, using the highest number will give you the most flexibility down the road, so that's what I recommend for most cases. Quality, sometimes called compression, will also affect the number of images you can fit on a card by crunching down the images in clever ways. This is basically a trade-off. By choosing a lower quality setting, which means a more compressed setting, your pictures won't look as good, but you'll fit way more of them on a card. Choose a higher quality setting, or less compression, and the pictures will look a lot better, although you won't be able to shoot as many at once. You may see choices like fine, standard, economy, or you might see icons that either look smooth or like little stairs. The smooth icons mean good quality, the stairs mean low quality. The best quality setting you can choose is, of course, no compression at all.